Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to an exciting episode of BOMAP. Sorry the video is a little later than I was hoping for, but uh, such is life. Well, today we're going to be looking at under pressure, compress that number line, but we're going to be doing some practice for it. So, just as a recap of what happened last time, we looked at how to compress the number line, which came about by applying the division operation to the entire number line. And we saw what that did is it basically shrunk the size in between ticks and compressed it down. Just like with multiplication, it expanded the size between ticks, which caused the number line to stretch out. So division, just kind of being the opposite of multiplication, naturally compressed it down. So we're going to get familiar with this concept by doing some practice questions. So number one, calculate the following by compressing the number line. So here we have all of these are being divided by 2 which means we're going to be compressing the number line by 2, or dividing it by 2. And we also see that we have a 0 here, but the rest of these are all negative, which means we have no need to do any positives, so we can just have our number line be to the left of 0, all negative numbers. Furthermore, these values get quite large, they go to 110. We have negative 20, negative 40, and negative 110, which means that we're going to want to label our number line using multiples of 10 most likely, or some bigger value. So. If we use this, this should do the trick for us. So we see here, starts at 0, and is only to the left of 0, because we don't need any positives on the right over here. And furthermore, every label I have is a multiple of 10, so we have negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, and so on, all the way up to negative 110. I didn't have quite enough room here, so I had to draw negative 110 over here, but that's all right. And what I did is, to go from kind of one labeled tick to the next, I have two units of distance in between. And the reason I have this is because it'll make it easier when we want to divide this number line by 2. So dividing it by 2 means we're going to be compressing things, which means that we're going to want to draw a corresponding number line here and place down our numbers. So we can imagine all these numbers being attached to the number line, and of course we can draw in the ticks if we wanted to, but we're going to be compressing it down now. So we're dividing this number line by 2, which means that we're going to be dividing all the distances between ticks by 2. But conveniently, we have a full distance being 2 units long, so dividing that by 2 will mean a distance now just becomes 1 unit long. So when we compress it, we just make all these distances 1 unit long. All right, and we didn't move zero because we always fix zero when we're stretching or compressing the number line. And we can also imagine that there's more numbers here. It's just what we had to work with. Um, but we can imagine like negative 120, negative 130, and so on and so forth as we move to the left. Okay, great. So part A says, what is negative 20? Oops. What is negative 20 divided by 2? Well, where does negative 20 line up with? lines up with negative, negative 10. All right, so that means negative 20 divided by 2 has to be negative 10. All right, part B, negative 40 divided by 2. Well, negative 40 lines up with negative 20, which means that negative 40 divided by 2 has to be negative 20. All right, so our compression, it basically caused us to divide everything on the number line by 2, which means it'll line up with itself divided by 2. All right, part C, negative 110 divided by 2. So negative 110 is right here, and that lines up with halfway between negative 50 and negative 60. And what's between negative 50 and negative 60? Well, it would have to be negative 55. So we get negative 55. Great. And lastly, 0 divided by 2. Well, we know that 0 splitting that up into two groups has to be 0. And we also see that 0 lines up with 0 since we just fixed 0 when we compressed this. So 0 divided by 2 equals 0. Great. All right, so that's question 1. That was kind of just the simple idea of compressing the number line. These next ones are going to be a little more complicated, but you should still be able to do them. I collapsed a meter-long slinky to be four times smaller than it was expanded. Model this collapse using division applied to the number line. Okay, so the slinky is a meter long, and we need to collapse it to be four times smaller than it was, which means that what are we going to be dividing the number line by? We're going to be dividing it by four, right? So if I take this number line here, 
I've started at zero and I've just labeled positive numbers because that's all we need for this. And I've drawn a slinky here to be between zero and one. Furthermore, all of these numbers I've spaced out to be four ticks, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on, right? And the reason I did that is just, it'll be easier to draw once we divide this by four so we can have something to line it up with. All right, so we have this all lined up and dividing it by four means we're gonna be taking these distances and making them four times smaller. We're gonna be dividing them into four. So this distance here divided into four will be worth one of these small distances, which is why we made this whole distance kind of worth four of those in the first place. And so just dividing it by four means we're gonna compress it down to be, to make these distances four times smaller, keeping zero fixed as usual. And boom, and of course we could have six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth. We see that zero lines up with zero and four lines up with one since zero divided by four, which is what we did to the number one, equals zero and four divided by four is one. And we could also look at the stuff in between. But we see here that the slinky was between zero and one. So when we compress this down, the slinky is now kind of between zero and one on this compressed number line here. And we see here that this slinky is four times smaller than it used to be when it was expanded, right? And so what is the new length of this slinky? Well, it's from zero to wherever one lines up with, but one lines up with 0 0.25, right? This is 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and then one. So each of these ticks here is worth 0.25 each. So we get that the new slinky is of length 0 0.25 meters. All right, so that is one application of this way of thinking about number lines as being collapses. I have a secret number. I took the number line and I divided it by three. The secret number lined up with zero. And then I took the number line, the same number line as before, and instead divided by five this time. The secret number once again lined up with zero. What is my secret number? So I could take a number line like this, and this was just from the lecture video. Uh, so that's why these markings are here. And if I divided it by three, it's gonna look something like this, right? Where all the numbers kind of got compressed down and we can go on, but the number line divided by three looks something like this, where these distances are three times smaller than they were up here. And we're saying that the secret number on here lined up with zero. Now in this case, it looks like zero is what lines up with zero. But let's see if that also holds when we divide the number line by five. All right, so on this number line, I labeled it slightly different than this one, just so that there's five ticks in between, so we can easily divide it by five, right? So we go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, that gets us to one, one, two, three, four, five, that gets us to two, and so on and so forth. So when I divide this number line by three, you can imagine compressing everything down, and now the distances between numbers are going to be five times smaller than they were before, right? This distance between zero and one is five times smaller than it was up here, right? So we've compressed this number line by five, and again, you can imagine it all being pushed down. But I think it's also useful to just write it out like this as well, instead of having all those little pieces and compressing them down like I was before. And it says that the secret number on here also lined up with zero. But that number is also going to be zero, right? So in this case, divide by five, zero lines up with zero. In this case, divide by three, zero lines up with three. So in both cases, the number lines up with zero. What's the reason for this? Well, the reason for this is that zero is fixed when we divide the number line, right? Zero is the only thing that's going to line up with itself when we divide the number line by something, right? So zero divided by three, that is zero. Zero divided by five, that is zero. But is it is that true just for three and five? No, it's true for it's true for any other number. Right, zero divided by seven is still zero, right? Divide the number line by seven. The zero is still fixed when we're dividing it, right? So zero still lines up with zero, right? The only exception is when we have zero divided by zero, and that isn't really well defined. It's something that I will talk about in a future video, but for right now, just kind of take my word at zero divided by zero not being something that's nice to work with.
Okay, so the secret number in this case is just zero. All right, let's look at question four. So question four says, I applied an operation to the number line and three on the new number line matched up with one on the old number line. What are three possible operations I could have performed to the number line? Okay, so what this means is that we're taking a number line here and it says, I applied an operation to the number line. Okay, so we'll take another number line. And some operation was applied to it. We don't know what yet. Such that three on the new number line lines up with one on the old number line. So it's saying that the three on this one lines up with this one. What are three possible operations I could have performed to the number line? So maybe we shifted the number line to get three to line up with one. Or maybe we stretched or compressed it by some amount to get the three to line up with one. What it's asking is that what operations could we have applied to the number line to get a three to line up with the one? So one possibility is if we took a number line and we just kind of slid it over. And if I slid it over, that would get this three to line up with one, right? Sliding it over. Now, how much did I slide it over to make that happen? Well, I'm sliding it such that I move over one, two, right? And which direction did I move? I moved to the left, right? So that is subtracting by two. So one operation then would be subtract by two, right? That causes our three on the number line to line up with one on the old number line. Perfect, so that's one possibility. But can we also express subtracting by two as something else? If you recall from another video, we talked about how addition and subtraction can be expressed as each other. So how can we express subtracting by two as the addition of something? Well, it's the same thing as adding negative two, right? Adding negative two means that I'm moving to the right because of addition, but the negative means I'm moving in the opposite direction. So that means I actually still have to move two to the left, which causes my three to line up with one. So adding negative two is another operation that we have at our disposal to cause this three to line up with the one. And another operation we can do has to do with division, which is what this video is focused on. So how can we get this three to line up with this one? Well, if we compress the number line by just the right number, we can kind of cause this three to get pushed down to where the one is. So let's do that. What should I compress the number line down by to get three to line up with one? Well, that's the same thing as asking three divided by what equals one, right? Because compressing the number line is the same as division. Well, we know that three divided by three equals one, right? And I've also conveniently labeled this number line such that between numbers, there are three ticks. So if we just compress this number line down by three, making the distances to be three times smaller, we'll see that this three lines up with one. So dividing by three will also cause three to line up with one. So all three of these operations when applied to a number line will cause the three to line up with one. All right, and now for the last question, we saw that division compresses the number line, but we also saw that multiplication by zero compresses the number line flat down to zero. Is there a way we can think about multiplying by zero as division? All right, so this is kind of a weird problem for several reasons. All right, so it's saying that division compresses the number line. Yeah, we know that, right? If I divide this number line by two, I'm making these distances to be two times smaller, right? If I divide the number line by four, I'm making the distances four times smaller, right? The bigger the number I divide the number line by, the smaller the distances between these numbers are gonna be, right? If I divide the number line by 100, I'm making all of these distances 100 times smaller, so they're gonna be really, really close together, right? But they're still gonna be separate from each other. And the, what this question is noting is that when we multiplied the number line by zero, it compressed it flat down to zero, right? Multiplying by zero made all of these distances zero from each other, which meant that they all got pressed down to the exact same point. And this is a bit different than what we saw with other multiplication, where multiplication usually kind of spread the number line out. Multiplication by zero compressed the number line to a single point. And in that respect, it kind of felt a little more like division, maybe, where division 
is compressing the number line down. So the question is asking, is there a way we can actually relate division to multiplication by zero? And the answer is yes. So if we divide this number line by bigger and bigger numbers, right? Divided by 10, divided by 100, divided by a million, right? Basically, we're kind of approaching, in some sense, this multiplication by zero, where the distances are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so eventually, we divide by something so large that we've almost compressed the number line down, right? The numbers are so close together. But it's only when we actually multiply by zero that we are able to completely compress things down. So the idea is, is if we were to somehow maybe divide by something like infinity, where we're kind of approaching dividing by infinity, only then will we actually be, only then will it actually be the same thing as multiplying by zero. Now, this concept is a little difficult to grasp. And indeed, this kind of thinking and this exact thing is something found in calculus. And what I just did might look something like this. Of course, you don't have to worry about that right now. But try and understand the concept. Dividing by something that gets so big, that gets infinitely big, is the same as basically compressing the number line down such that these distances are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller, and such that when we do that infinitely, where the distance becomes infinitely small, that approaches multiplying by zero, which we saw does compress the number line entirely down to zero. I hope that made sense. If not, don't worry about it too much, because as we go on, we'll go into the deeper mathematics of what I just talked about. But that's not until calculus, so you don't have to worry about it for a long time. I just thought it was interesting. Let me know what you thought of that problem. All right, well, that does it for today. I hope you found that video useful. I had a good time doing it. I think number five is really interesting. And other than that, have a good one, stay groovy, and I'll see you in the next video.